Hello, my name is Joy. It looks like you're just in time for another Human Race Club meeting, but you'd better hurry into the treehouse if you don't want to miss the beginning. <clears throat> will the meeting please come to order? I said, will the meeting please come to order? Come on, you guys, come to order! Be quiet! Be quiet! Thank you, Crackers. <clears throat> we have an important decision to make. The Thunderbirds challenged us to a baseball game this Saturday. Are we going to accept? Yes! Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Why not? Sure, why not? Baseball's always a nice thing to play on Saturday. Yeah, sure, I like playing baseball. But I hope there's a refreshment stand there because last game we went to, there wasn't a refreshment stand and I got all hungry and tired. Quiet, and I wanted quiet. To drink and there let's wasn't not all any talk there. at once. That's better. Now let's get on with it. I say we accept the challenge, but only if I get to pitch. Why should you get to pitch? Because we won't win if I don't pitch. You didn't do such a hot job the last time we Here we the go Earth. again. You pitched and we lost. Look, Big Shot, it wasn't oh, the pitching no. that lost the game, it was the fielding. You can this reminds me of the argument we had of the lean, mean machine. Oh, Precisely. Yeah, I pitch circles around you any day. Ah, yes. I remember the lean, mean machine. And I remember the argument that Casey and Pam are referring to. As I recall, this is how it happened. Let's not forget that winning isn't everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, Pamela. Winning isn't everything, but it sure beats the heck out of losing. And win is exactly what we're gonna do. All right. <laughs> Casey, also ecstatic with the prospects of winning, tried to stifle his giggling, but his enthusiasm could not be contained. There had not been this much excitement around the Human Race Club treehouse for a long time. The single object that had charged the air with what seemed like pure electricity had been appropriately named the Lean Mean Machine. The Lean Mean Machine was a wooden motorless go-kart that had been carefully constructed by the Human Race Club. It took the group a little more than three months to gather all of the vehicle's many parts and assemble them. As the club members stood in tribute around the magnificent go-kart, they fondly reminisced about everything that had taken place in the course of the last few months. Teddy spoke in reverent tones. Can you believe what we just accomplished? Look at that go-kart, and all because we work together as a team. As far as I'm concerned, we should feel proud of ourselves. All right, Teddy! Woo! Good job! Yay! Yay. When things finally calmed down, Casey that? asked innocently. Oh. Gee, since this go-kart was such a team effort, mm -hmm. how are we going to decide who gets to drive it in tomorrow's race? The race Casey referred to was the Hometown Go-Kart Derby, held annually on the town's steepest hill. Its paved street was closed off one day a year, so the special event could take place. Cash prizes were awarded to the winners. According to an announcement in the local newspaper, $200 would be given to this year's first place winner, $100 would be given for second place, and $50 for third. Maggie confidently answered Casey's question. Everybody already knows who's driving in tomorrow's race. Oh, yeah. Who? 
Don't you remember who came up with the idea of building a go-kart? Maggie's comment triggered Pamela's thinking. Hmm. The answer to that question would require a bit of research. After all, go-karts have been in existence for years. That's not what I mean, Pamela. I'm talking about the person who suggested that we build a go-kart. If you remember, I saw the newspaper article, I told you guys about it, and I suggested that we enter the derby. That's why I should be the one to drive in tomorrow's race. I should get to drive. She may have I was the one that found a good deal. It was as though wheels. Maggie had Thank set off a string of firecrackers in the middle of the gathering. The group the exploded into a series of arguments. Well, Each I club know. member was yelling why he or she but should be the one to I drive in the derby. should be the one to drive the go-kart. Only Pamela remained silent. She tried to block out the bickering by putting her hands over her ears, but it was no use. Finally, when she could stand it no longer, she jumped into the middle of the group and yelled as loud as she could. Everyone, listen to me! The sound of Pamela's shrill voice stunned everyone into silence. Golly, Pamela, I never knew you could yell so loudly, Casey said respectfully. Then it was quiet again. Pamela took advantage of the silence and continued. This decision must be made exactly as we make all our decisions. We need to discuss it and then vote on it. Pamela's right. Let's go into the treehouse and settle this disagreement in a civilized manner. The club members were climbing into the treehouse when Teddy's mother called out to them. Teddy! Maggie's mother just phoned. She wants Maggie to come home for a piano lesson. Oh, rats! I hate those stupid piano lessons. Maggie, your lesson's only 30 minutes long. Why don't you come back when it's over? That's a good idea. We won't make any major decisions while you're gone. Okay, Maggie? Oh, well, I guess that's what I'll have to do. See you guys later. Reluctantly, Maggie left. When Maggie came back to the treehouse almost an hour later, she found a note posted on the door. It read, We went to buy some stuff to eat. We'll be back soon. Maggie decided to wait for the club members to return. As Maggie wandered impatiently around the treehouse, she came across the notebook that contained the club minutes. It lay open to a page of notes that Pamela had written that day. Maggie skimmed through the words. When she got to the last sentence on the page, she shook her head in disbelief. The sentence read, In regard to the derby, it was decided that Teddy would be the one. Maggie could feel her blood beginning to boil as she talked out loud to herself. So they weren't going to make any major decisions without me, huh? She threw the notebook down and paced around the treehouse like a tiger in a cage. The more she thought about the situation, the angrier Maggie became. Finally, she climbed down from the treehouse and walked over to the lean, mean machine. She grabbed the rope that was attached and pulled the go-kart to the sidewalk in front of Teddy's house. Nobody's gonna tell me I can't drive in a derby. I'll show them. Hello, this is Joy. For the ending to this video and for other videos like it, go to our website at joyberryenterprises.com.